Welcome to this morning's service of Pentecost, when we remember God's Holy Spirit coming afresh and anew and in power on the early church. Uh, and uh, it's not the first time that God's Spirit came. We read about God's Spirit hovering over creation, uh, right in Genesis chapter 1. Uh, and many people were touched by God's Spirit throughout the Old Testament. And indeed, even in John's Gospel, we read of Jesus breathing his spirit upon his disciples. The difference here was the spirit has come in power and we, his church, are empowered to share the gospel in today's world. As part of our reflection on Pentecost, we'll include the act of communion. Uh, sometimes we think of communion as only being about remembering uh, but today we're thinking about it as being an empowering act. You know, when we gather around the Lord's table, he is filling us afresh and anew and ready to go out and witness. So that's what we're going to be doing uh, in a little while. It's been great over the past 24 hours listening to uh, people and reading their comments as they've been blessed uh, as they pray. All sorts of things that we've had, pictures and uh, messages uh, and indeed visions. I want to just pick up on one of them. Uh, Romy uh, had this to say, I had a vision. Um, she had the vision in the middle of the night. I had a vision that each of us brought an empty bottle to him and asked the Holy Spirit to fill it. He filled each bottle with a different coloured liquid. We are called to drink some and to share some, but are promised that it will never completely empty. God will replenish it. It is the Holy Spirit. That captures exactly what's going on this Pentecost. We're encouraged to bring a bottle to the Holy Spirit that he might fill it, that we can share it, but first we drink it and it will never run empty. There's a meditation about the Holy Spirit, thinking of uh, the earlier story of what happened, the, the transformation of uh, the timid people into bold people. Some people would say this, who is the Holy Spirit? Sounds a little bit spooky to me. Aren't those weird old prophets meant to be spirit-filled? And a lot of strange things they did. And what about King David dancing before the Lord and all of that? His wife was appalled. Then at Pentecost, some odd things happened, speaking in tongues and everyone hearing in their own language. Little wonder people thought the disciples were drunk. No, you know, catch me doing anything like that, anything to do with the Holy Spirit. I mean, Christianity is meant to be safe and sensible, isn't it? Who needs the Holy Spirit? You know, for a lot of people, including myself, I think that would have been how we looked at the Holy Spirit for a long time. My first instance of meeting uh, the Holy Spirit in power was at the first meeting we went to of a small Pentecostal church in Toaster. And I thought they were all crackers. Uh, people singing in tongues and raising their hands and getting all excited. Uh, and funnily enough, the church that we went, then went to, which was safe and sensible as far as I was concerned, was transformed by God's Spirit over time and we saw him coming in power. But that says nothing as to what is happening now. We come out of uh, this lockdown with the opportunity of being a church transformed. I don't know if any of the rest of you have thought it's, it's more than a coincidence that the day after Pentecost, June the 1st, is the day in which the government starts to lift the lockdown, that we come out from behind closed doors. Those disciples who were locked away for six weeks, a little bit less than us, that six weeks they were locked away, terrified to come out. And then when they came out, they were transformed. And they spoke powerfully, not because of who they were, but because of who was in them, Jesus' Holy Spirit. And we find ourselves in exactly the same position now, that we have a time that we can share the gospel. I do encourage people to sign up for the uh, seminar that I spoke about. This week, we've got a minister's conference on Zoom that we're going to uh, be thinking about what has happened, what's good, 
what's been the challenges and how it might transform church going forward. Everybody is thinking about what is to happen. God's spirit is moving afresh. Uh, let's make sure that it's not just moving afresh out there, but in our lives, in the life of our church, but in the life of each of us as individuals. You know, Jesus came to the world, but he came to the world individually, to individual people. And he's doing exactly the same today. He's coming to us collectively. But to each one of us today, as you're listening to this and you're thinking, well, have I missed out? Have I missed the opportunity of God's Spirit? Then don't let that be the case. Have a word with me afterwards. Have a word with a friend. Uh, and let's pray how God's Spirit can just transform your life, transform my life, that we might be closer to Jesus. And so we come to the Lord's Supper. And for technical reasons, we've got to switch off the virtual background uh, and come inside. And here we have our bread and indeed our wine. I'm not going to read aloud the words of scripture, which we all know, because I want us to focus on the meaning rather than the words themselves. The reality is that Jesus gave up his life for each one of us. He was prepared to go to the cross and die. And as we take the bread and break it, we remember that sacrifice. We remember that he gave up everything on the cross for us. As we eat our bread, we remember the sacrifice that he made for us. So let's do that. Remember Jesus. As we do that, let's remember those things, those situations, those words, those actions, where we've let Jesus down. Let him bring to mind those things that stand between us and the Father. And we're reminded in scripture that later, at that last supper, he took wine and said, do this in remembrance of me. And that's really important to remember his sacrifice. But he goes on and says, until I come again. And so when we drink it today, let's remember, it's not just something that happened in the past, but a prophecy about what is going to happen. So let's drink together until he comes again. And we'll say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.